So today we've got a fast thought and we've got our friend Sasha on. Sasha runs Poco Chips. Maybe I haven't tried it yet. Highly Go have addictive. it. Go have it. Highly, Highly addictive. addictive. It's in my house. It's a regular in my house. I just had a nice sandwich with Poco Chips for lunch. So not a promo, literally just did that. Um, so so pretty awesome. Um, what we brought Sasha on to do, though, Sasha has just launched at a retailer and he had some great comments on LinkedIn. Um, we'll put Sasha's profile, LinkedIn profile, so you can go see his comments there as well. But he had some really cool comments about um, things that worked, demo day, things that didn't work. And I thought for brands that are noodling this idea, especially if you're a food item, you really got to get trial. Demo days are kind of a critical part of discussions with retailers. So we thought we'd bring Sasha on and just kind of get his take on on how demo day went, um, goods and bads, you know, things that you do again, those sort of things. For sure. Thanks, Phil. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I would stress the most important thing. The number one thing is if you can control the amount, if, if you're going to a big retail and you have, and you're going to launch, you know, kind of same day um, and have demo day at, you know, X amount of stores, I would say try and keep it to a minimum and see if you can divide and conquer. For example, if it's two stores, you can hit up two stores. If it's 15 stores, maybe um, ask the retailer if you can, um, if you don't have the resources to have field people to go to all stores, mm -hmm. then see if you can, you know, split it up into two or three type of um, waves, two, almost two, yeah, right. waves okay. or different days. Right. The, the most important thing I learned was, and it was the only way to learn was actually going to the stores and seeing how um, it was, you know, it was your product is being represented. Um, sometimes you don't have the option to um, pick your demo staff. It might be in, in store or in, you know, in, from the, uh, from the store, or, you know, you might hire a third party agency. If it's in store, it's all that more crucial to go in um, and see, um, you know, see, sorry, let me rewind. I would say if it's in store staff, I would communicate with a demo coordinator and explicitly tell them how you want your brand to be represented and, um, you know, work with them to ensure it's, it's the best possible delivery. Mm -hmm. Even with that, the demo coordinator has to work with the store managers. The store managers have to work with the grocery or, um, you know, uh, duty managers. And then those duty managers have to uh, liaise and coordinate with the demo folks. So what I learned was, you know, you can tell, you can tell, you can be as clear as possible to the first person in line, but there's sometimes broken telephone that happens, you know, later and later. Yeah. Because you're so, passing it through four layers, basically, right? In order four, before five it layers, actually yeah. gets to someone who's actually handing out your product. Right. And yeah. everyone's busy, right? So there's going to be um, some miscommunication, mm -hmm. you know, accidental um, miscommunication. Good and bad things that you saw at store. So when you walked into store, mm -hmm. what did what did you see? Like, what, what did you love? And then what were some of the things that you went, oh, gosh. So, so the first thing I'd, so yeah. I, I hit up five stores. Okay. How many and stores did you do demos in? Let me go back. Did you 31. All the same day, same time. Same day. Yep. Okay. So and all day, right? Because you went from like 1030 till four or something like yep. that. And let me, so a couple, and did, so did you hire a demo company that did all 31 or was so, it individual stores manage their own demo? Um, individual stores manage their own demo um, from the head office. Yeah. And I used... Um, so Kyle Marsham is, um, you know, he's a partner yeah. of mine and we used a lot of hit, we, we used the green, his, his company called green fresh media. We used his staff who voluntarily, you know, who are awesome people, um, spent their weekend visiting stores and, um, you know, hitting different stores and, uh, capturing that on social media. Okay. So, okay. yeah, but so to your, back to sort of, sort of to your beginning but point, head office, it's, right? it's a head yeah. office controlled thing. Yep. But each store runs, I mean, I came from retail member, each store sort of runs independently, even though they have no independence. Exactly. So, okay, there's a learned lesson, I'm sure, there. <laughs> For sure. But, you know, it's... <laughs> it's a tough one, man. I mean, you can't police everyone, right? And everyone's, of course, trying their best, but... For sure. Um, For sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. so when I came in, I would try and find where Poco was. One thing I asked, what you know, one thing I've learned 
moving forward is ask if you could get prime real estate. Um, you know, where, where do people like, you know, where is their traffic? You know what, for example, um, a lot of the stores had were right front and center when he walked in, I saw Poco and others would be back corner kind of behind a pole, you know, right. Yeah. unintentionally but you know i was like oh is there any way we can move so and so a bit well it's intentional well? but not mal intended exactly it's intentional though like mm -hmm. be, be clear about it the reason you're back there is because that's the space they have they don't really know who you are there's really no maybe personal connection and what they'll do is whatever's best for them because you don't want they don't want to screw up their front or whatever reasons they had right it's just right. not done with mal intent but it's it's unfortunate but it is intentional you're there for a reason and you know what, actually, that prompted me to say this is that there was another company doing a demo that day that had, you know, not in all sorts, some sorts of better real estate. So, yeah, maybe see if maybe another thing that you can ask is, is there another company that is demoing the same day? Um, another thing I learned was merchandising. Yeah. Um, each store is going to present and set up. The merchandising differently some every of the managers you know, different every, every person in the different. aisle is different every store layout is different to right. some degree so, so you know yeah, to that wow. person to, to wow. that coordinator you can ask them and yeah. one thing i didn't do i didn't ask them how to present the product behind the scenes how to merchandise it yeah. it's a suggestion you can always you know i didn't do it i would say that's a that's something that i've learned moving forward um and then ensuring that you know if you're if there's a if there's a promotion price promotion on your product, make sure it's visible and make sure that people can see it. Um, you know, you're putting money into this demo. You want to ensure that, you know, people don't only really taste it, but they're getting a good deal on the product mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. which some, you know, some wasn't as visible in others. And so um, you want to make sure that's kind of like loud and clear, right? Price is one of those things that is a factor into purchasing a product. When you did this, you pitched this to head office, to mm -hmm. your buyer or merchandise manager um they said you know go out to each of the stores we're authorizing this every store will do it i'm assuming yeah was it uh their suggestion that you do all 31 stores was it something you wanted to do i so mean you know what we're going to pull out of this is there's a shit ton of learnings in here for sure it's right? something i you know my team and i wanted to do we wanted to have um you know build a buzz we're not you know it's like we're demoing in 31 stores not two stores 31 province-wide this retailer you know right. like we wanted to make some buzz and sound right. out of it right but you know what i found out is it's hard to control everything when there's just you don't have the resources well you had 31 independent demos. and we hit and we hit up 17 out of 31 so right. which is a lot that's which quite is really remarkable which is yeah. really remarkable on its yeah. own but what you learn, I guess, pretty quickly is that that's 31 independent mm -hmm. demos. Yep. Same company. I appreciate that. Same authorization, but 31 different people's view on how to do a demo. And, um, and, you know, this is a risk that could happen. I mean, it didn't happen to me. Every single demo folk that we met at all 17 stores were generally pleasant and inviting. For sure. You know, with a third party, you know, you're only going to get, you know, most likely like good people, right? You don't have that control with when it's in store, no. right? So that's a risk um, that people will have to take if that's the only option they have. But, you know, it's not like a game changer per se, because people like free product, whether the person is, you know, happy or not, people take free product. But. They take the free product, but you know what you're both, we're all trying to do was what's the ROI? Like right. ideally you want to know that they're going to come back and buy it. So I, when you went yeah. in, sorry, Phil. No, go ahead. When you went in, did you, what were you trying to get out of this? Like what were, was there a measurable that you and your buyer talked about? Like what were you trying to achieve? I mean, a few things, um, brand awareness. We yeah. wanted to let, I mean, we, we created a whole social campaign. We wanted to let, to let people know that a hyper local chip company is now available at Longo's. Yeah. Um, and we wanted to know that just in, even in your own backyard, this chip is chips can be delicious. Right. So um, 
we just wanted that trial. And what we've right. seen is when people taste the product, and I did this in my soft launch too, you know, it's hard I, not to buy. It's I have a it, there's an incredibly yeah. high repeat rate, and yeah. that's you know with my chips, I think that's um, it's it's a very like strategic tactic to get into people's mouths. Right. And you know we did have a very we did have a pretty successful um, day. However, I do I did romanticize it being run more smoothly. Um, and again, there's just so many cooks in the kitchen. Um, but you know, Kenya, I think I said maybe I was a bit naive, and you said no, you're just an optimistic person. So nothing wrong with that. Doesn't matter. I mean, it's, that's that's all learning, right? It's not catastrophic. You're, you're still functioning. It's just yeah, it, what the, it happens. It just doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't, you look at it thinking, this is what, what I didn't dream this one. This isn't what my dream looked like. Yeah. But oh, I love it. Of... I love it. It's in London. Awesome, um, okay. Well, sorry, one, last, one, yeah. one last thing. Go for it. One last thing. I printed way too many market. Like we had these really cool postcards yeah. and it was like, it was a really like creative, like um, informational sheet. Like, like we had what 50 to hundred per store. Maybe we had like two or three people pick it up. No one picks up marketing materials no. or no one scans the QR codes. People taste the snack, yeah. they buy it or they don't, and they walk away. Anyways. Or they'll come back and buy it later. So you always got to remember that too. So it's really important to do a, a good demo. Right. They may not buy yes. it on the spot, yeah. but they but may buy it on the next trip. But it's those marketing materials. Yeah, that's a lot of money. It's, it's not worth it. Yeah. I, don't, I, I, if I It didn't work for us, per se. It's so. okay. <laughs> okay. This is our fast thought. Um, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for jumping in. Sasha, thanks for doing this. Thanks, we, guys. Uh, we really appreciate it. Appreciate you bringing me on as always. Cool.